to the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint Show. I am your host, Jay Jones. Black Entrepreneur Blueprint was created specifically to educate and inspire black entrepreneurs to launch, build, and grow successful businesses. Join us as we help build an economic power base in the black community by promoting business ownership. If you are currently an entrepreneur or want to be an entrepreneur, we invite you to join us every week here at Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Welcome to the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, episode number 359. I'm your host, Jay Jones, and today we have another outstanding and informative show in store for you. Today's show topic is titled, How to Build a Million Dollar Business, Seven Components You Must Have. How to Build a Million Dollar Business, Seven Components You Must Have. Now, as entrepreneurs and prospective entrepreneurs, Many of us dream about building a million dollar business plus. So make sure you stay tuned for this episode and I'm going to give you seven components that you have to have in order to build that million dollar business. Now, before we get to today's episode, I just want to share a few things with the BEV family. First and foremost, I want to welcome all first time listeners to Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Welcome to the BEV family. Please stick around until the end of today's broadcast. And I'm going to share all my social media contact information and my resource links, such as the link to my new book, A New Black Wall Street, Circulating the Black Dollar Worldwide by Building Successful E-Commerce Businesses. Also, two platforms I created to help circulate dollars in the worldwide black economy, BeSmartByBlack.com and HireBlackFreelancers.com. And also my new rebranded, rebooted Black Entrepreneur Blueprint Academy, where I have all of my courses, trainings, and tutorials behind that BEB Academy wall. You can go to BEBacademy.com, get five days free access, and you can have access to everything in the Academy. I also want to recognize that today is Memorial Day, and I want to honor all the men and women who died while serving the U.S. in military service, and they've given the ultimate sacrifice, so we want to honor them today. Now, let's get ready for today's show, How to Build a Million Dollar Business, Seven Components You Must Have. As I stated in the beginning of the show, I'm sure building a million dollar business is probably on your to-do list or your bucket list as an entrepreneur or prospective entrepreneur. But let's first take a look at what monthly revenue it takes to generate a million dollar business, and then we're going to get into seven components that you must have. So if you want to generate a million dollars minimum in revenues, you're going to have to do $83,334 per month in revenue. $83,334 per month in revenue. Now, if you break that down to revenue per day, that's a million dollars divided by 365 days. So that's an average of $2,739 and some change each day to hit that million dollar per year gross revenues. Now, I know it sounds like a lot, guys, but once you get your synergies going and you get your leverage and you start scaling, then it is possible. Now, one of the things is I've been blessed to be able to build two separate million-dollar businesses, the first one with my mortgage business and the second with my e-commerce portfolio and my physical products businesses. Now, both of these businesses look totally different in terms of structure and type of business. So there is no particular type of business that you need to have that can scale to a million dollars. But there are certain components that you're going to want to have. And we're going to talk about that today. So, for example, the first company I built to a million dollars was my mortgage company. And that company comprised of 50 plus employees. Uh, We had operations, office space, employees, payroll, the whole nine yards. Now, versus my e-commerce portfolio and physical products business, that's more of a one-person operation with contract workers and subcontractors that I use. So it's totally different. So once again, guys, there's no specific blueprint for the type of business that you need to scale to a million dollars plus per year in revenues. Uh, So the first thing I want to talk about, guys, is component number one. And if you don't have this component, nothing else is going to matter. And number one is the million dollar mindset. 
So you must have the mindset of a founder for somebody that's trying to build a seven figure plus business as opposed to having the mindset of a say what a small business owner. So this shift entails the vision, the leadership and the execution to build and scale your business to seven figures. So here's some of the things about mindset that you want to keep in mind. Number one, you need to invest in yourself. And I talk about this all the time, be it online courses, whatever you need to do. You got to elevate your entrepreneur IQ so you can invest in yourself by studying, taking courses, finding a mentor, joining mastermind groups, uh, speaking with people who have accomplished what you're trying to accomplish. Another thing about your mindset, you need to understand the type of entrepreneur and the type of person you are. And what I mean by that is, do you work best from a passion perspective or do you prefer to solve a problem or a combination of the two? Okay, so understand the type of entrepreneur in person you are. My thoughts on this are kind of straightforward. So if you're doing something that you're passionate about, that's going to be something that you're going to run through the wall for. You're going to have more interest in and you're going to probably stick to it more than just a business that you're just trying to solve a problem, but to each his own. So for me personally, it doesn't really matter to me. And I guess that that explains why I have so many diverse types of businesses, because I enjoy the business of building businesses. That's what I enjoy putting together things. So I'm not necessarily a big Uh, doing something that I'm passionate about versus solving a problem. So once again, step one, we're talking about having that million dollar mindset. We talked about investing in yourself, understanding the type of entrepreneur and the person you are. And what is your, what are your optimum conditions for success and how do you create them? And this is what I'm talking about. Where do you work best? You work best at home or do you work best in an office? What type of financial requirements do you need to comfortably start and build your business? So there's certain things that are optimum conditions that you want to create that are going to help you be successful. And all of this comes with the mindset. So component number one is having that million dollar mindset. If you don't have that, guys, nothing else is going to matter. You got to have that million dollar mindset. A lot of times we're stuck in, once again, the small business mindset where we think we don't have the skills or the tools necessary to build a million dollar business. But we do. All we have to do is we have to be consistent, persistent, and we have to learn to study. Once again, one of the biggest things that you guys can do is find a mentor, somebody that's done exactly what you want to do. And like I said, I've been blessed to be able to build two separate million dollar companies, totally different. Now, the first one, if you've listened to the podcast for any time, that thing was rocking and rolling until the crash hit in 2007, 2008. And basically it went off the cliff. So I almost lost everything then, but I was able to build back up. So once again, guys, number one, component number one, you must have that million dollar mindset. Component number two, Identify who you want to serve and what is the outcome you desire for your customers. Identify who you want to serve and what is the outcome you desire for your customers. Who's your target customer and what is the transformation or outcome that you'll provide with your products and or services. I'm going to repeat that. Who is your target customer and what is the transformation or outcome that you will provide Uh, with your products and or your services. Remember, people don't buy information. They're actually buying transformation. So it could be something as simple as if you got ashy lips, right? You may buy some lip balm, right? So that (laughs) transforms your ashy lips into nice looking lips. But it could be something as simple as that. So identify who you want to serve and what the outcome you desire for your customers. Who's your target customer? What is the transformation or outcome you're going to provide with your product and or service? Now, one of the things that I found as a serial entrepreneur for 20 plus years, also as a business coach is many times we don't clarify what our mission is. And so that keeps you from being successful in building a seven figure business. You need to clarify and understand what your mission is. And so I use a simple, what I call my ABC statement. Okay, I help A do B by C. 
And I did an episode on this, the and I forgot the title of it and the number, but it's the most important sentence that you're going to have in your business. So I help A do B by C. And that clarifies who you're working with, how you're going to do it, and what you're going to do. So for example, for Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, I help black entrepreneurs build successful, sustainable businesses by helping them implement proven strategies, systems, and actionable steps. I help A do B by C. So write down your ABC statement. And once you do that, you're going to clarify exactly who your customer base is, you know, what you're going to help them with, and how you're going to do it. I help A do B by C. I help A, black entrepreneurs, build successful, sustainable businesses by helping them implement proven strategies, systems, and actionable steps. I help A do B by C. Okay? And that's component number two. And today, guys, we're talking about how to build a million-dollar business, seven components you must have. Number one is having a million-dollar mindset. Number two is identify who you want to serve and what the outcome you desire for your customers. Component number three, and I talk about this on a lot of the shows, get proof of concept before you go all in. All right. Get proof of concept before you go all in. Don't go hog wild and put the cart before the horse. Right. So here's a question you need to ask yourself. And this is something I don't think a lot of entrepreneurs ask. Do people want your product or service? Do people want your product or service? It's a simple question. Now, as creators and entrepreneurs, a lot of times we think that, oh, people are going to love your product or service. So people start building their product or service without any proof of concept. And then unfortunately, what can happen is you spend all that time building something or creating something that nobody wants. Okay, so you always need to have proof of concept for your product or service before you invest too much time and or money on a concept that's doomed to fail. Okay, so you need to learn how to test your product or service with a minimum viable product, an MVP, a minimum viable product. Okay, so you can use beta groups, uh, you can use dummy advertising, you can even sell your product or service and then do a refund. So And I've said this on several shows, but I have to understand that everybody listening to today's show hasn't listened to the previous 358 shows. So I'm just going to give you guys some ways how to do or create proof of concept. And I'll give you some real life um, examples from what I've done before. So I created um, this uh, supplement and it was a new tropic. And what that does, it, it helps you think better and get more clarity. And so what I did was I contracted out the manufacturer. I got some samples. I took it myself. I gave it to a couple of my friends. They were like, yo, this thing, this thing works. And I was like, all right, cool. So I had to get proof of concept for myself first just to make sure it works. Now, what I did was I only bought 10 bottles, 10 samples. But what I had done is I had contracted out with the manufacturer for pricing on 100 units, 250 units, and 500 units. And then I found out that the the time frame that it would take for me to make my initial order and have my label branded on the product, which is a private label product, would be about three days. And by the time they did that and shipped it, I would probably have the product in about five days. So here's what I did to get proof of concept. I created a landing page uh, with the sales offer for the new uh, nootropic product, the supplement. And basically what the landing page said was, um, get this free nootropic, just pay for the shipping and handling. Now that bottle of 30 uh, pills, I think it cost me like $3.95 or $4. Let's just say $4. And I was charging $6.95 for shipping. Now, after they got it, if they didn't cancel in 30 days, they would be billed $29.95. Okay, and they would get that auto bill each and every month. Now, what happened was, remember, I only bought 10 bottles of samples and they didn't even have my label on it. 
But what I did was I go ahead, I went ahead and created the landing page. And I also created the sales page where I sold the product. And here was my thought process. If I sold more than 25 or 30 bottles, which is my proof of concept, then I'm going to call my manufacturer. Hey, look, I need a uh, hundred bottles or whatever it was, 50 bottles with my label on it. Ship that thing out real quick. Okay, so now what I've done is before I had all this inventory sitting in my garage or my basement or my, my office, I wanted to get the proof of concept. And when I hit 25 people that actually paid money, then I was like, OK, this thing can work. So true proof of concept, guys, is not asking your family and friends, what do you think of this idea? OK, it's you know, it's not asking a beta group. What do they think? I mean, that's that's part of your research. But true proof of concept comes when people go into Hip Pocket National, pull out their money and they buy your product and or service. So that's how you get true proof of concept. When people spend money for your product or service, that's true proof of concept. Let me give you another example that I've done before. Now, this wasn't necessarily selling anything, but it was it was testing out a business idea. Years ago, I had a magazine <clears throat> that I was thinking about starting. And in order to grow that magazine, I knew I would need salespeople. So what I did was I started running employment ads online for salespeople. And what I would do, send your resume. I gave them an outline and a description of the, uh, the job. I also gave them the salary, which was actually straight commission. And I gave them a breakdown of low, average, and high income ranges. And so what I did was I started getting resumes and I actually would go and interview people without even having the magazine set up. Because I before I did all of that stuff, you know, I had everything in the background. I had the editor and I had somebody to create the magazine, but I didn't even create the first issue yet until I had proof of concept that I could get people to sell for me. So once again, guys, number three, get proof of concept and don't go all in, test first. Now, beta groups. I want to talk about this because this is another example. And I use beta groups all the time. And beta groups basically allow me to see if a product or service is wanted and also get paid to create that product or service. And so anytime, not anytime, but most of the time when I do a beta group, I'm testing. So, for example, I did a beta group on newsletters, right? I think it was, uh, what was it, uh, $95, $97 or $149. I can't remember. But it was a newsletter beta group. Now, that beta group allowed me to create content and it allowed me to get feedback from those 10 people that were in the group so now I could create a larger course or program. Now, what that beta group did was it gave me proof of concept. So, yes, I had the outline of, of the training already, but I didn't go and create and, and spend a whole lot of time or money on it until I found out that people were willing to pay for it. So using a beta group that pays for your product and or service. So they paid before I even created it. Yes, I had the outline done, but I didn't go in and create the slides and all of that other stuff. So once again, number three, guys, get proof of concept before you go all in. And what we're talking about is how to build a million dollar business, seven components that you must have. Number four, and this is real key, guys, set and track realistic goals and key performance indicators. Set and track. <laughs> Don't just set the goals. And the KPIs, you got to track them, set and track realistic goals and key performance indicators. Now, there's an old saying that says, how do you need an elephant? And the answer is one bite at a time, because when you're looking to build a million dollar business from scratch, that may look like it's something way in the future. But you got to chop it down, break it down into different components to get to that end goal of a seven figure plus business. And so when you do, when you create your goals and your KPIs, you got to have time frames associated with it. Okay. You got to have time frames associated with your key performance indicators. 
and your goals. So in seven days, I'm going to have my LLC set up. Seven days after that, my, my business plan is going to be completed. Seven days after that, this is going to happen. So you need to have those uh, set and track your goals and your key performance indicators. So one of the things that I use when I start, you know, setting goals and KPIs, key performance indicators, um, a lot of times it can become overwhelming. So what I do is I actually create different types of tasks. So as I gave you the example, you know, uh, I want to have my LLC in seven days. I want to have my business plan done seven days after that. So how I break tasks down, guys, is in three types of tasks. Or, or separate tasks. Number one are critical tasks. These are tasks that have to be done before I move to the next step. So I'm going to write down everything that I need to do from the beginning all the way to the end. And of course, this is going to be fluid because you're going to have to add and subtract things as you go along. There's certain things that you don't even know that you're going to need to build your business until it comes up, until you're in there uh, in the mix. So critical tasks. All right. These are tasks that have to be done before I can move to the next step. Then you have primary tasks. These are tasks that aren't necessarily as critical, but they need to get done ASAP. And then you have secondary tasks that can be done at a later time. So when I look at a new business, I write down everything that I need to do. And I create a, a, a basically a task sheet when it needs to be done, well, what the task is, when it needs to be done, who's going to be doing the task, and then I'll check it off. And that kind of gives you a roadmap or a formula. And so once again, using the same example, you're looking to start a business, all right? After all the, the thought process, the ideation and all of that, you need an LLC, all right? You're going to have a task that's, that's basically going to be a critical task, okay? Because you can't even open your bank accounts, your business bank accounts without that. Get that done. Who's doing that? If you're doing it yourself, fine. What's the date it needs to be done or oh, it needs to be done by this date and then check that off. Next thing, your, your business plan. Who's doing the business plan? What date does it have to be done? Is that what type of task? Is it a critical task? Yes. Check that off. And then that's how you go down the list and you start to create and track your goals and your KPIs, key performance indicators to keep you moving forward. So there's a lot of moving parts in trying to build a seven figure business. So you want to be as organized as possible, but you have to set and track realistic goals and create key performance indicators. And that's not just when you start your business. That's as you continue to grow your business to your seven figure plus business. That's number four. All right. Component number five, create systems. And I see this a lot, guys. Um, when most people start businesses, they don't have any systems in place. And I understand it comes with experience. But for example, you need to have systems for your business and you need to create systems for every aspect of your business. Now, don't get bogged down in that right away. OK, but you need to have that in the back of your mind because you want to think of it just like you're building a franchise. So when somebody buys a franchise, there's an operating manual, operating procedures for everything. This is how we cook the fries. This is how we pack or stock the, the boxes or whatever. There's operational procedures for everything. And what that does is that documentation allows you to hire people and bring people on. And you're not having to repeat the same thing every time when you hire a new salesperson. There's standard operating procedures that are written down from the way you greet people, what your sales process is, what your system is. So you need to create systems, okay? So those systems help you work on the business and not in the business. I know many times when we start a business, we're doing everything. We're the chief cook and bottle washer. But as you continue to grow and scale, you're gonna wanna have those systems in place. Now, we're not just talking about systems for operations, right? We're going to need systems for sales. We're going to need systems for marketing. You're going to need systems for retention. So as you grow your business, document your system or your process, and that way you'll have it. So when you bring people on board, hey, you bring a new salesperson on, this is our, our standard sales operating procedures. This is how we do it. You bring somebody else in in operations, 
This is how you do this job. So each job has needs to have standard operating procedures. And once again, don't get bogged down on that right away because you might be starting as a, as a solopreneur or one person business. But as you grow, you're going to need to have those systems in order. OK, and that's something that's very critical. Now, remember, as an entrepreneur, I did a show on this, too. You only do three things, family. Think, create and execute. Thinking is the easiest part. Creating is a little harder. The execution is the hardest. And so what this is going to help is with the execution of your business. As you hone in and and you sharpen your skills and you understand how your business works and what is what's the best way to do things, what are your standard operating procedures, this is going to help you execute. So once again, number five, component number five, create systems. And what we're talking about today, guys, is how to build a million dollar business, seven components that you must have. Number six, if I don't say anything today, (laughs) I'm telling y'all, if I don't say anything today, y'all got to listen to this because I've been beating, I've been beating this to death. Number six, build your platform. So guys, when you build your platform, your monetization opportunities exponentially multiply. When you build your platform, your monetization opportunities exponentially multiply. It could be 3x, 5x, 10x, okay? So there's three kind of platforms you can build, or three types of platforms. So your platform can be based on video, it could be based on audio, it could be based on a written platform. Now, under each of those, there are different things. For example, video platform, you could be YouTube, but we're going to talk about owning your platform in a second. If it's an audio platform, it could be like BEB, it could be a podcast. A written platform could be a blog, it could be a newsletter. So there's different types of platforms you can build. But you have to make sure that you own your primary platform. Okay, because you can get kicked off of any platform. So I know a lot of people that built their platform on Instagram ended up getting shut down. And a lot of the stuff isn't because of your doing. You have people out there that are sabotaging their competitors. And their job is, hey, let me get this Instagram account uh, banned so now I don't have to compete. So when you don't own the platform, you're at risk, okay? So you always want to have some type of website. Nobody's going to be able to take your website down, okay? You control that. You always want to have an email database. Nobody can get rid of your email database. You control that. It's all about control when it comes to platform. Having social media, uh, a following, that's that's gravy. That's great. You want to get that. But if that's what you're living and dying with, trust me, you could lose your business overnight like many people have. So you can have a ton of IG followers, Twitter followers, TikTok or whatever platform you want to be on, you know, Facebook, you can get shut down. You get shut down and you don't have any additional way to contact your people, your community. Guess what? You're done. So building your platform and and controlling where nobody else can take that away from you. So when we talk about platform guys and in, in response to building a seven figure business, I say this all the time. The difference between a million dollar launch and a hundred dollar launch is the is your database, family. It's your database. It's a function of the numbers. That's all it is. When you hear these quote unquote gurus talking about, oh, I did a million dollar launch. Yeah, because they got 250,000 people on their database. And a percentage of those people are going to accept whatever that launch offer is. So they have 250,000 people on their database, on their email database, and you got 25. Who do you think is going to have a bigger launch? And see, when you're talking about building a seven-figure-plus business, your platform, guys, your platform is key to this. It's key to this. And, And once again, it's numbers, it's numeric. So your platform, what happens is you're going to attract people that like what you're talking about, that have an affinity of what you're talking about. So Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, 
the the name says it all. I'm black and I'm talking to black entrepreneurs. I'm trying to give you a blueprint based on actionable steps. So if I have a uh, hundred thousand listeners per episode, right? And I come out with an offer that the BEB family's like, yo, I want to learn how to do this. Guess what? Then it's just a function of the numbers. X amount of people are going to, are going to take that offer up. But if I have 20 people listening to each episode, yeah, maybe a few people will take it up, but it's a function of the numbers. If you want to scale your business, if you want to hit seven figures, I'm telling you, you have to build a platform. You have to build a platform. Now you can do it without a platform, but it's a lot easier with the platform. So you listen to some of these podcasters out here who uh, a lot of the white podcasters get millions of people are listening per episode. So when they come out with a, a, a product, an online course, a piece of software, whatever, guess what? If 2% of the people out of a million people buy this product or service, it's crazy. The numbers are ridiculous. So building a platform. And once again, if you're not into podcasting, if you don't want to do YouTube videos, if you want to be behind the scenes, that's why I talk about milliondollarnewsletter.com. You can be anonymous and create a newsletter and build a platform that you control. The Hustle Newsletter, The Skim Newsletter, sneakernews.com, million dollar businesses based off of newsletters. Do you know who owns sneakers.com, the newsletter? No. Now, you might know who owns the Hustle or the Skim or some of these Morning Brew or some of the other big newsletters, but there are newsletters out there that will allow you to be anonymous and build your platform. And the monetization when you have a platform is exponential. And I'll just use a newsletter, for example. If you want to learn more, go to milliondollarnewsletter.com. So if I own a newsletter and just say the newsletter is going out to um, just say outdoor people that that shop at Cabela's and these outdoor stores, say you're an outdoorsman, fisherman, hunting and all of that stuff. So I have a uh, uh, fisherman today newsletter. I'm making this up as I go along. And I got 100,000 people that subscribe to my weekly newsletter. And I'm giving them information and articles, not that I write, I'm just curating and aggregating and curating content that these fishermen would like. What's the best lures? Uh, where are the great places to fish? What are the best uh, rods? You know, what's the best type of bait? All types of information and content that a fisherman would want to have. And let's look at some of the monetization opportunities, Okay. Number one, you can sell your own products. So say you manufacture uh, fishing lures. Okay, guess what? You got a newsletter that goes out to avid fishermen and outdoorsmen. What do you think one of the articles or the advertisements going to be in the newsletter? Oh, about your great fishing lures. Oh, guess who else wants to contact these 100,000 subscribers of yours? There's tons of companies that would love to be able to put their advertisement or article in front of these people. So now you're making money based on advertising revenue. OK, you can have a sponsor for, you know, Monday's newsletter is sponsored by Cabela's or, or Dick's or any store, whatever you want. You can charge a couple hundred dollars, thousands of dollars for that based on your readership. So what you're doing is you're building a platform and anytime you want to monetize that, you put your ads in there. You have ads from other people and you can even have affiliate links in there. OK, say you uh, have an Internet marketing newsletter and you're a big proponent of uh, click funnels or some other software. So you can have a special promotional code in your newsletter that goes out to Internet marketers about click funnels. So when they try click funnels and subscribe, guess what? You make money. So when you build a platform family exponential, exponential growth. I don't think y'all understand what I'm trying to tell you. And we're going to talk about media and buying advertising, but when you own the media, there's nothing better than that. 
It could be a podcast. It could be a YouTube channel, even though you don't own YouTube, your video channel. It could be a blog. It could be a newsletter. If you want to be anonymous, create a newsletter. How many of you have industry newsletters that you read? You think they're doing that for free? So when I was in the, the hospitality business, in the advertising business, selling hospitality to, you know, resorts and hotels, man, there's a there's a hotel newsletter called Hotel. What is it? Hotel Daily. <sighs> man, they only have about uh, 75 to 80,000 subscribers, but they focus on hotel management and the revenues and the type of ads and sponsorships in that daily newsletter comes out Monday through Friday. You have different software for hotels. You have uh, franchise uh, information. You have all type of tech information for hotels. You have management courses. You have all types of things for the hotel management crowd. So once again, guys, that's about building a platform. So there's all types of, of products and or services, affiliate products, your own products, all types of services that you can sell when you have a platform. You have a newsletter or a podcast that reaches X amount of people a, a week or a month or whatever. That's a platform. So all you have to do is serve your consumers or your customers what they need and what they want. So I'm telling y'all in order to scale, just, just look at some of these numbers right here, right? If you have a platform, the, the reason that a lot of these uh, white podcasters and, and you know, uh, YouTubers make a ton of money is because they've created the platform. And all they're doing is now they're funneling different products and services through that platform to monetize. Okay, so if you're trying to build a million dollar business, to me, the smartest thing to do to create longevity and to make sure that you're hitting those marks is to build a platform. Now, you can sit there and create a business and just be doing paid advertising all the time. But guess what? You're spending on that. Not that you even if with a platform, you still are probably going to do some paid advertising. But if you have a built in audience. And man, come on, you making money for free because the audience is already there. All right, and we're going to talk about that a little more. And what we're talking about, guys, is how to build a million dollar business. Seven components you must have. Component number one, just a retake, a million dollar mindset. Number two, identify who you want to serve and what the outcome you desire for your customers. Number three, get proof of concept before you go all in. Number four, set and track realistic goals and key performance indicators. Number five, create systems. Number six, build your platform. And number seven, your business must be scalable. And what do I mean by that? So if you want to reach seven figure range and beyond, your business has to be scalable. So if you're trading hours for dollars, your business can only scale, but so much. So you need to create passive income and systems to help you scale, leveraging technology. So here's a couple of things you need to look at in order to scale your business. So are your products and or services priced high enough for you to get to a million dollars per year in revenues? Are your products and or services priced high enough for you to get to a million dollars a year in revenues? So for example, once again, if you're selling houses versus selling hot sauce, right? <laughs> and I said hot sauce because I'm sitting here looking at my brand of hot sauce. But if you're selling houses versus selling hot sauce, there's a difference in the revenues you're going to generate. Okay, so if I'm getting 3% commission on a $400,000 house, right? That's $12,000, okay, just for that one transaction. How many hot sauce bottles do I need to net $12,000? It's a difference. But one of the things about product-based businesses, you can scale units. So if you, if, if you have the right connections and synergies and leverage, you can scale units, okay? So are your products and or services priced high enough to get you to a million dollars a year in revenues? Okay, and I, I just did a show about this two weeks ago. Are you charging enough? for your products or services. And so if you're charging a, a, a $10 product and you're trying to make $100,000 a month, that means you got to sell a lot of that product. If you're, char if you're selling a $3,000 product, 
That means you only got to sell 33 of those units to get to $100,000 a month. Okay. So are you, are your products and services priced high enough to get to a million dollars? It's funny. Uh, one of my good friends who I ended up getting into the mortgage business with one of my business partners it's funny, um, he used to sell cars and then he switched over to selling mortgages. And so I asked him, I said, man, why'd you, why'd you go to uh, move from cars to mortgages? He was like a higher price product, higher commission. <laughs> I was like, you know what? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And so that's how he got into the mortgage business and in turn got me into that business. Um, next thing you do in order to scale, you have to leverage technology. OK, so we have to be with our marketing, our CRM, uh, which is our customer relationship management, uh, our advertising. We need to be able to leverage technology to scale so we're not manually doing everything. So you can have systems like Hootsuite so where you can schedule out all of your social media posts, you know, for the week or for every two weeks for a month, whatever. You can schedule it out as far in advance as you want. You might want to have uh, the technology to help you with your customer retention, you know, customer service, all types of softwares and technology that you can use that's going to help you scale your business. OK, inventory, for example. So if you're in a physical products business, if you didn't have software that that calculated your inventory, that means you'd be in the back in your office calculating all the bottles of hot sauce I got in here as opposed to having it in inventory on my on my website with Shopify, which will calculate my inventory based on product sold. OK, also. And then when I get product in. All right. In addition to leveraging technology, you want to create synergistic relationships to scale. Could be affiliate scale, uh, affiliate partners uh, or just partners in general. So in just as opposed to just you selling your products or services, then you can get affiliates to help sell and move that product or service too, so you can scale. So what you see a lot of time with these online courses that cost $997 or, you know, uh, $1,900, a lot of these produ course uh, producers will partner up with affiliates where they'll get 50% of the course. So if the course is $997, then that affiliate may get $500 if they sell or refer a course. So once again, you're trying to create synergistic relationships that make sense for both yourself and your partners. Or you may have a relationship with somebody that um, that product or service that you had makes a whole lot of sense for another partner or another business, and they may want to use your product or service. So you want to create synergistic relationships to help scale. Next, um, I just talked about this, sell more products and or services. So if you want to scale, so in, in the example of my hot sauce, I can scale units easier than I can scale my time, right? So granted, I may not, I'm, I'm selling $12 bottles of hot sauce, meaning I got to sell a lot more, but I can actually sell more product. It's not, it's not affecting me. I'm not trading my dollars, my hours for dollars. So I'm able to scale units versus if I'm doing one-on-one -on -one coaching or consulting where I'm trading hours for dollars. So you can scale units if you have that leverage and you create the right relationships, right? And also uh, increase your media reach. And we're talking about your business being scalable. So when I talk about increase your media reach, um, I talked about this on another episode. So there's paid media, earned media, and owned media. Okay. Let me just go into this real quick. Paid media. That's very simple. When you advertise on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Google ads or whatever, Amazon pay-per-click, that's paid media. That's marketing that you pay for. Earned media. That's publicity or exposure gained from other uh, sources as opposed to paid advertising. So for example, if you do an Instagram post and people repost it, that's earned media. They share it. You write an article on a blog post, right? Somebody shares it and whatever. So that's earned media. You're not paying for that. And the other type of media is owned media. That's property that you control and it's unique to your brand. So it could be your website. What I talked about, it could be your newsletter. It could be 
uh, a video channel that you created. But that's owned media. And owned media is the basis of a platform. So that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Owned media. So you can pay for media or you can get earned media, other people sharing your media, your post and all of that, articles, or you can own the media. So for me, guys, I like ownership. And with that ownership or own media, once again, platforms will help you exponentially scale your business. That's owned media. Owned media. So here's another quick example of owned media. Say, for example, you're a uh, financial consultant. Right now, most financial consultants would love if Forbes magazine or the New York Times did a great article about this great financial services guru that's helping people grow and invest their money. Now, that's that would be earned media, right, which is free. Now, the chances of that happening for most people are slim to none. But what happens if you had owned media and you created your own media to the same marketplace as Forbes goes to or the New York Times financial section goes to. So say that financial advisor had created their own financial newsletter. Don't have to know that that you created the newsletter as the financial advisor, but you're talking about investing, building wealth, stocks, bonds or whatever. And all you're doing, once again, is aggregating and curating content for your prospective customer or your marketplace. Now, that financial newsletter grows to 250,000 subscribers. Oh, guess what? I'm a financial consultant. Maybe I'll do an article on myself or I'll do an advertisement or sponsor the edition, whatever that newsletter edition is, if it comes out weekly or daily or whatever. So having owned media, the platform that you own, That means now you don't necessarily have to pay to get into uh, advertise on the New York Times website or advertise in Forbes magazine, which costs a lot of money. Because what you've done is you created your own vehicle that you own that speaks to that same customer base. So we got to start getting smart about it, guys. You know, one of the things as a serial entrepreneur, when I see stuff that to me doesn't make sense. I'm like, yo, this situation doesn't make sense. Stop crying about it. Create your own situation that's going to alleviate it. And that's the way I think about when people hate their job because I was right there. I used to hate all my jobs because I'm just not built like that. And I decided to bet on myself. So guess what? Nobody was going to hire me to be the president of a mortgage company, right? Guess what I had to do? I had to create that scenario. I had to go get in the mud and learn the business and then start building that business. You don't like your job. Um, I was in advertising sales for a while, right? And I said, you know what? I don't like the corporate bureaucracy. How can I be the director of advertising? I started my own magazine back in the day. So when I see things to me that don't make sense, then I go out and try to rectify that. How can I do that? How can I create a situation That makes sense for me. And in doing so, you can build your million dollar business. So we have to think a little bit deeper, guys. So anytime you're spending money for advertising, I don't care if it's Facebook, Instagram, if you're still running ads in newspapers, right? (laughs) You know, Craigslist, whatever you're doing. If you had a platform, you wouldn't necessarily have to do that. You may want to do it to augment your whatever you're currently doing. But if you owned a platform that spoke directly to your audience, would you really need to pay for advertising? So that means everything that you're that you're bringing in is gravy. And I'm just using a newsletter, for example. You can supplement, you can make money and connect with your audience for free. You're making money and still connecting with your audience. Do you have to put in a little bit of work? Yeah. But that's what I'm talking about, scaling your business. And the best way to scale your business, family, is a platform. So today we're talking about how to build a million-dollar business, seven components you must have. Now, I know that was a lot. So if you want to get the notes, make sure you go to bebconnect.com and there's, you can sign up for the newsletter. So every Monday when the newsletter comes out, it comes out Monday and Thursday. 
Monday's show is in Monday's newsletter. So make sure you sign up for the newsletter and that comes out every Monday and Thursday. Now, before I forget, guys, let me share my social media contact information and my resource links. Then we're going to close it on out. So once again, I mentioned at the top of the show, my new book, A New Black Wall Street, Circulating the Black Dollar Worldwide by Building Successful E-Commerce Businesses. If you're interested in building a successful, sustainable e-commerce business, go to anewblackwallstreet.com. Pick yourself up a copy, print version $14.95, digital version $9.95. If you need additional assistance building that successful, sustainable e-commerce business, my new flagship course is out, Brand Builder Academy Elite. You can go to bbaelite.com, use the coupon code bbaelite100, save $100 off of the program. It is a 14-week implementation program from A to Z, from ideology to creating your physical or digital products brands to being able to sell your digital and physical products brands on all your major platforms, including your own, which is own media. <laughs> OK, next, I mentioned at the top of the show, two platforms I created to help circulate dollars in the worldwide black economy. If you are a black product producer and you want to sell your products to black consumers worldwide, upload your product information to be smart buyblack.com. It is totally free. Be smart, buyblack.com. Connect with black consumers worldwide and sell your product. If you are a black freelancer, you do anything on fiverr.com or freelancer.com. Upload your information to hireblackfreelancers.com. It is also free. H-I-R-E, blackfreelancers.com and connect with black consumers and black business owners that want to hire black freelancers. I also mentioned at the top of the show, the new rebranded, rebooted Black Entrepreneur Blueprint Academy. All of my online programs, except Brand Builder Academy, are in the BEB Academy. Go to BEBacademy.com. You get five days free access and you have access to everything inside the Academy. All the online trainings, tutorials, courses, workshops, and PDF downloads. BEBacademy.com. Now, I know that's a mouthful, family, so you can go to bebconnect.com, bebconnect.com. On that page, you will have all of the links that I just talked about and also my social media contact information. Now, let me give you that real quick. So uh, anything long, family, hit me on my email, jjones at blackentrepreneurblueprint.com, J-A-Y-J-O-N-E-S at blackentrepreneurblueprint.com, Facebook, Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Twitter, jjones001, J-A-Y-J-O-N-E-S-001. Instagram, I have two IG accounts. The main one is jjones for real, J-A-Y-J-O-N-E-S, the number four, R-E-A-L. And also on Instagram, Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, family. Go to YouTube, type in Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, hit that subscribe button. I have additional content on YouTube that is not on the podcast. Yes, the podcast does come out on YouTube every Monday morning, 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, when it hits all of the other major podcast platforms. Uh, also, LinkedIn, connect with me on LinkedIn, Jay Jones, Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Also, if you're on Clubhouse, link up with me at, at I am Jay Jones, at I am Jay Jones on Clubhouse. Once again, family, everything I just said is at bebconnect.com. Once my new website comes out in a couple of weeks, all you're going to have to do is go to bebconnect.com and it's going to give you a personalized tour through the website based on the content and resources that you need. So when that thing drops, it's going to be hot. So definitely look forward to that. But right now, just go to bebconnect.com. So in closing, family, once again, I think one of the biggest things here is the mindset. So we need to have the not the small business mindset, but the, the seven figure business mindset the multi-million dollar business mindset. And a lot of times that all comes down to what you think you can accomplish. And so when your mindset is right and you're connecting with the right people and you're in a group with people that are thinking the same as you, people that are, are, are speaking life into you, people that are doing things that, that you want to do, then that's going to help you exponentially grow your business. It's going to give you that extra juice that you may need when you get discouraged you know, you want to make sure that you're hanging around positive people. OK, and I talked about 
the four types of people you have family, friends, foes, and fools, right? And certain people can be in more than one category, but you need to make sure that you're, you're hanging around friends as in people that support what you do, believe in what you do. Because there's a lot of discouragement we get sometimes as entrepreneurs, and it can come from your spouse, your partner, your family members inside your own house. So mentally, we got to be strong. So you got to have that million dollar mindset. Uh, Number two, once again, identify who you want to serve and what the outcome is. Number three, proof of concept. Number four, set and track realistic goals. Component five, create systems. Component six, build your platform. Ding, 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 ding. Build your platform. Number six. Number seven, your business must be scalable. And there's certain things that you can do to scale your business. Once again, if you want the show notes, just go to BEB Connect. And then on the left-hand side, it should be a BEB Lifestyle newsletter link. Put in your email address. Bam, you're going to get all the show notes. Uh, Every Monday, the uh, show notes come out with the newsletter. For all you first-time listeners, Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, we drop every Monday morning, 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on all major podcast platforms and YouTube. I've seen the show on platforms I ain't never seen before. I don't even know how they got it. But <laughs> but as long as it's out there, we're trying to get this good word out there. Once again, it's about building an economic power base in the black community by building and supporting black owned businesses. And I say this each and every week, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart, guys. We get more and more downloads each and every week, and that's attributed to you, the BEB family. So please continue to spread the word about the podcast, which is the driver, uh, the blog, and all of the ecosystem around it and the resources around Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. And so I mentioned my, my new website is coming out shortly, and I really want that to be a hub, a resource hub for current and prospective black entrepreneurs that need to elevate their entrepreneur IQ, get in the game, scale their business. And like my tagline says, launch, build, and grow. That's what it's all about, family. Love you guys. See you same time next week. Peace.